The Museum Roadshow is brought to you by 125 Apparel. This is the third year that Detroit Lakes will be the focus of the world because of the wonderful palace or the ice sculptures that are going to go on, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're going to find out through the imagination of this guy, Hans Kilsdorf, <laughs> who lives on Lake Sally, but yep. uh, came here from, did you come from Hollywood? I, I worked briefly in Hollywood, uh, but it, yeah, Minneapolis born, lived in Phoenix, did yeah. motion pictures for quite a while, and then well, moved whenever, back to Minneapolis, and now we're here. Whenever I try to get people's attention, I say you're from Hollywood. Oh. <laughs> does it work? Yeah, <laughs> okay. it does. Okay. So, good. Hans, tell yes. us the secret design. What's going to be out there by the pavilion? By February 6th, the lighting is going to be February 6th, so, so put that on your calendar. Uh, every year we try to do something different. You know, the first year we did the full palace, um, and then last year we really wanted to add something, a whole different twist to it. So we, we uh, talked to engineers in Harbin, China, of how to get lights inside the ice so we could control the lights vertically instead of, the first year was wall washers, which basically just with a, a full spectrum of lights, we can change the, the wall of the, the ice that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. But last year we wanted to control it vertically, horizontally, and make the lights a, a spectacular light show. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I designed a palace, uh, not you know like the full structure palace, but more like a palace area uh, with the throne that was controlled with those lights inside the ice. So we had to figure out how do you carve the ice to inlay the LED light systems and controllers to be inside the ice. So this year, uh, we're taking um, the, the uh, technology we knew from the first year of the wall washers, from last year, the lights that are inside the ice, uh, we're combining that. So part of the walls will have lights inside, part of the walls, the towers will have wall washers, the throne will be lit up independently so we can control the lights so when you're there as a spectator or sitting on the throne, actually, you're gonna have a light show that's all the way around you wow. and it's, a, and it's and with the way they can program it, our, our, uh, our light engineer, Jack Davis, the way he can light it is, is gonna be spectacular. And then we're gonna do a lot of sculpting features around it as well on an ice bridge, which is another thing that I designed that we talked about as a steering committee, mm -hmm. was how to uh, get more access for uh, elders or people with physical disabilities. Ah. So instead of having so many steps in a row to get to the throne now, we're gonna create uh, an ice snow ramp which will serve that purpose to get up to the throne a lot easier. Really? Yeah. And what about the bridge? You don't walk across the bridge, I imagine, for liability reasons. Right. It's 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 a full bridge. I mean, it looks yeah. like a an ice bridge, but it's going to be snow, and it's going to have a slight ramp up to get up to the throne. But it's more of an optical illusion because you know with ice. You know, it, we all know it's slippery, and we don't want anybody getting hurt. No. Uh, so what we do is we the blocks that we harvested. We harvested like over a thousand blocks of ice this year. Um, is we stack them and then carve them to make an optical illusion that you're on an ice bridge over an ice moat. And things went better than expected as far as the harvest, right? This year, yeah, every year, you know, as we talk about, you have to, it's very organic. You're working with Mother Nature and, and uh, she can throw you curveballs mm -hmm. and, and, and it really depends on the thickness of the ice. When we harvest the ice, the blocks are cut at 22 by 44 inches. Um, the factor that we don't know about is the thickness of the ice. And the ice blocks, they weigh, it's usually about 30 pounds per inch. So if you have about a 14 pound, or I mean a 14 inch block, you're looking at about 420 pounds on up to about six, 700 pounds, mm -hmm. you know. So these blocks are very heavy uh, chunks of ice that we're moving and then that we're carving and stacking. And Now when it comes to the actual sculpting, do mm -hmm. you only do that or do you teach other people how to do it? Um, well, that's, that's funny because before we built the first palace, I had never worked with ice in my life. <laughs> and uh, so we have Eric Rotter who's on our team. He has actually done the ice sculpting competition in St. Paul, so he, taught me actually how to work some of these ice sculpting tools, how to chainsaws work with ice. And it's been like all of us with building any of these palaces is we learn as we go. Uh, we consult, we talk, we ask a lot of questions to, to the people in St. Paul or those who have built palaces, um, A, for safety, and then how does it work and what's the best way to architecturally do something. Mm -hmm. uh, and so basically you just kind of put the tool in your hand and you start learning. And mm -hmm. so last year, I've sculpted the thrones the past two years, uh, this year, um, unfortunately, I just had a knee injury yesterday, so hopefully I can sculpt a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, so we, we 
teach others how to sculpt and, and that's the whole thing is we try to bring more people on like this here. We have a lot more people, volunteers helping out with the ice harvest and teaching them that it is a lot of fun. It's an interesting thing to hopefully keep this thing going for, for future years and mm -hmm. generations to come. How about King Isbet? Will he be back? I just love the the logo that you came like, up yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, King Isbet, yeah, he's our, he's our royalty. He's our, our royal uh, mascot for the palace and that's why we build it for him and his throne is to welcome back the spirit of winter and that's why we live up here in the Boulder North um, is to, to celebrate winter and to be outdoors and to, to take on and enjoy the outdoors that is given to us now versus in July. And so King Isbet is our mascot that represents all the events, all the celebrations that happen year round. So if you look, when you come down here and you see his portrait, you can see all the representatives of all the little blings and boggles that hang off of his clothing that represent all the different events that we have throughout Detroit Lakes uh, throughout the year. Plus the bird, well the bird is part of the birding the, festival. Well the bird it? is part of the birding festival as well as uh, there are two birds that actually live in Minnesota year round and the, the blue jay if you see is on a nest in his crown mm. and that is spring is around the corner so he's always hopeful that the spring will be right around the corner for all of us to enjoy why we live here on the lakes is I love the open water. Yeah. So, He's yeah. an awesome king. Well, thank you. And thank Isbet you. means? Ice cube. Ice cube. In Scandinavian. King yeah. ice cube. Yeah. Yep. And, and around here, you are really king ice cube. <laughs> yeah, we, we've really learned to embrace winter. Uh, we have fun, and, and the volunteers we have out here, whether it's the ice harvest people, um, the construction volunteers, uh, and the Royal Guards, we all have a blast and it's so much fun. You meet so many people and I, and I use the word volunteer because we're all volunteers. Mm -hmm. Our steering committee, we, we, we meet year round um, and so we do take a little break after the palace is torn down but then we start up and we start meeting to prepare for next year. Mm -hmm. So the palace that I designed this year was designed back in July when it's nice and 85 degrees and I'm thinking ice. Um, and then, so then we're ready by the time we get to this phase of it. We know how many blocks we need to do, what the lighting is going to be. We have everything hopefully in Great. line and good to go. Well, we're thank you for this gift to the yeah, community well, thank and you. the entire region. I met a fellow from France last year when I was one of the palace protectors. So you yeah. never know who's going to show up. Well, you meet a lot of people. And we, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people even within our community that I have not met who I've met just the past couple of days with the yeah. ice harvest and there's more that are going to be showing up for the construction and that's and we have so much fun because we just really uh, have a great time out there it's something totally different something you can't do yeah. any other time of the year really okay. and not many communities are are blessed to have such a supporting community and a supporting city that can actually make yeah. this come to fruition well we're going to find out about the construction crew from scott walls so that's next <laughs> Talk about construction, look at, we've got Scott Walls right off the ice. He's still bundled <laughs> up. All you did was take off your coat. It's pretty cold out there today. Yeah, it's getting warmer, but yeah, it's a very cold day today. Yeah, and how's it going? Is it going pretty well? Yeah, very well. We're almost done. They're just taking the last couple blocks off when I, out when I cut off the ice, so So you well. cut out the ice and then it cures for a while. It can't start building right away. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, the ice it never is completely solid. It's always a little bit it fluid and in motion. Mm -hmm. And so as it sits there in the cold weather, it'll heal itself. Any fractures it got from the process of pulling them out, mm -hmm. um, they become solid again. So yeah, we like to let them sit for a few days. And we're thankful to the Fairfield Inn to let us sit by their beautiful fireplace so yes. that we don't have to be freezing outside. Everything. They let us coordinate all our volunteers here, have lunch yeah. here, do our meetings in here for teaching our volunteers. So yes, that's great. Been great. And it really is a community effort, isn't it? Because there's money involved yeah. in pulling something like this off. One of our mottos has been by the community for the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're very blessed to be in this community. I know Han said that, uh, not just from the people willing to help, but the people willing to donate. Uh, we had a lot of businesses very willing to step up right away yeah. um, when we'd never done anything like this before and they were willing to donate to, to see what we could do. And, uh, it's been great. Uh, so then when we had to come back and decide to do three more years so that we could get through the 150th anniversary for the city and the county, um, we had to go back and ask for more money and they were all willing to give us more money again. So it's, it's been very great. It's mm -hmm. a great community we live in. And uh, speaking of donating, you're donating your time. You oh, own I'm, a business yeah. and here you are out there cutting the ice. Yeah, and I bring some of my guys down. They love everybody that gets to be part of this really enjoys doing it. But yeah, uh, yeah I bring some of my guys down usually for a couple days. And, uh -huh. and how is the museum involved in all this? 
The museum is our financial entity. We operate everything underneath the museum. Mm -hmm. um, they're the, uh, the beneficiary, essentially, for, for the whole project. Um, so all of our money runs through them, and uh, Becky lets us know if we can have any or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Becky. Becky blows the whistle <laughs> yeah. and says, you can or cannot spend? Yep, yep. Okay. And of course, they've done the uh, history book in the past that's still for sale yep. at the museum. And, uh, and then you'll, you've, got, you've got a great stocking cap on. It reminds me that you'll be selling some of the... Swag. The swag. Yeah, so we call ourselves the, the whole thing Minnesota Snice. It's a snow and ice showcase. Mm -hmm. So um, we do all the stuff out of ice, but we also have, we build a big snow slide with that for tubing down, and then we have the area, area high schools compete in a snow sculpting contest. So we and have we'll all be able to vote on which sculpture we like the best? Um, I don't know for sure how the voting's going to do, but yeah, that'd be great because last year I had to be one of the judges and that was no fun. <laughs> Trying to pick the best of the way those kids do a great job. It's, yeah. it's uh, all the art classes from I think four or five different high schools around the area here that compete in it. So we'll end up with probably 25, 30 uh, snow sculptures out there for people to look at as well. Okay, so Polar Fest is the kind of marketing umbrella. There's tons of events in the Detroit Lakes area from February 6th through the 17th, which is President's Day, and the lighting of the throne of King. E Isbet. Isbet is going to be on the 6th, the evening of, of the 6th, and that is so much fun to be there shivering. Yeah, and hopefully, yay! hopefully it's not as cold as the past two years. I think we've been 10, 15 below both days yeah. that we did it in the past, but it's still really fun. It's, it's awesome to see when ice gets yeah. lit up, there's just something magical about it. Well, thank you so much, Scott. And You're good welcome. luck to you and your crew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for watching this episode of the Museum Roadshow, brought to you by 125 Apparel.